Hi everybody, um, welcome back to part three of my Christmas junk journal series. Um, so this video is going to quickly show you how I assembled the pages to go inside. Um, if you watch my previous video, you'll see that I printed off a lot of um, my own sort of sketchbooky bits onto Tomaway River paper, printed on my normal printer. Um, but they were kind of quite thin, so here you can see that I backed them up with book pages and other pieces of slightly sort of stronger, tougher paper pieces. <laughs> and I did that by just sort of simply gluing them on um, with not a very strong glue, because I didn't want to mess up my sewing machine if I accidentally sewed through the glue, just like a sort of um, a glue stick. And I actually avoided gluing around the edges because that's where I knew I'd be sewing, and then just sort of whizzing around them on my sewing machine. Um, I started off using a white stitch, and I did zigzag because um, I kind of like the the effect it gives. But I realised after a while that if I do too much zigzag, there's quite a lot of holes punched through the paper, and I'm sort of in effect perforating it. <laughs> and I was a bit worried about them coming out, but in the end, I did like a combination of um, zigzag and straight stitch, um, just because it I quite like the effect of it, basically. And I did, I did a combination of white thread and red thread, so just kind of going around the edges of the paper to give it a nice effect, basically. So these are the pages after I'd finished sewing them. Um, so not necessarily neatly done, but just, I don't know, it gives a nice sort of detailed edging to the pages, which I quite like. So the next stage was to sort of organise them into signatures. So since my spine is pretty wide, I obviously didn't want to just do one signature smack in the middle. Um, so I did. I decided to do three signatures. So in this video I'm just sort of grouping them into three piles, trying to kind of get an even mix throughout. So I don't all have one style in one signature, if you see what I mean. And I'm also sort of thinking about um, which ones I want in the centre, because obviously the centre of the signature, when you open it up, you'll get the full paper spread, whereas all the other pages are sort of split in half. So I'm just sort of checking that the middle one is a nice sort of centre spread I want to see full. Um, and also making sure things are the right way up. <laughs> I did actually sew one of them slightly upside down, but it doesn't really matter too much. Um, because I can cover up the bits that make it obviously upside down, if you see what I mean. And a final flip through just to see that I like, I like the order and the overall look. So I've put that sketchbook page right in the middle of the book so that I get the full, the full view of it. I'm done more than a spread a day, so obviously I'm going to use this for um, sort of like a December daily type thing up to Christmas Eve, but I've actually done more than 24, I think there's 30 something, because I figure there's bits before Christmas and bits after, and I might want to stick in random things, you know, Christmas cards that people have sent me, things like that. And this is me thinking I just want to shove a few more pages in, um, just to sort of break it up a bit. So I'm looking through an Eloise book and wondering whether to use the pages, and I think I decide against that, and I just grab some of the plain um, 100 yen shop washi paper, and I think I just use three of those. Um, having the completely, well, sort of completely plain paper gives me the option of adding in something more decorative. Um, it's, sometimes it's quite nice to start with a plain page base rather than one that's already very highly decorated already and um, it just breaks up some of the spreads ended up being sort of samey samey so putting that one in sort of like broke it up a little bit So 
So that one I thought was a bit too samey samey. So I popped that plain one in to sort of break it up. And this is the one that I realised I, I actually sewed upside down. So, I mean, it doesn't, it basically, one of them ought to be the right way up because of the writing on it. Um, so that one has to take priority. And the other one, I'm just going to sort of cover up the bits that make it obviously upside down. It'll be fine. So that's the three signatures decided on. Um, and then it's just the order. So which one's going to come first? Which one's going to come second? Which one's going to come at the end? And I think I decide that the one with my sketchbook page in is going to be um, the central one. And then in order to sort of deal with the problem right away, I'm going to do the upside down one first <laughs> so that I can deal with that straight away. So those are going to go in there, into that spine. Um, oh, excuse my tatty looking old mobile phone cover I've just left there. <laughs> Shoved on the table. Definitely need to get a new one. Ignore that. So, as I said in the first video, what the plan is, is to um, sew them onto another piece of card, a separate piece of card, and then attach that to the inside of the book, so that I don't have to sew through the squirrel's poor little faces. It's not like tough card particularly, but um, it's fairly good quality. So that's my spine, that's the bit I'm going to sew the signatures to. So then it's a case of working out where the centre is, because obviously I've got three signatures, so working out where the middle signature is going to go. So I just draw a line for that one, and then line either side at equal distance um, for where the other two are going to go. Leaving obviously a good chunk of space, because I have a lot of space in that spine, and it allows for adding bulk with all bits and bobs going in, basically. Now, bookbinding um, techniques. I did read a few books a few years ago about how to do it, and um, I've forgotten exactly how you're supposed to do it. So, and since it's not going to actually show, because once I've sewn these in and that gets, um, once I've sewn the signatures in and that spine gets stuck to the inside, you're not going to see you're not going to see how it's sewn. <laughs> so I wasn't particularly caring too much about how I did it, whether I did it perfectly or not. Um, but I vaguely remembered you have to have an uneven amount of holes, maybe? I mean, it doesn't really matter, to be perfectly honest, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so I just, I think I did an une uneven amount, an odd amount of holes. Mark them on, obviously, so they were equal at least. Um, yeah, and then it's a case of punching holes into every um, every hole, <laughs> everywhere you want to put a hole. I'm trying to think of the word for when you have two lines crossing intersection. Anyway, you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. So I'm digging around for my pokey tool. Right, here's the pokey tool. So poking the holes through, being really careful not to stab your fingers underneath um, and not bend the card too much. So when, when you're book binding you poke all your holes through first um, because you don't want to be trying to ram the sewing needle through a hole that isn't there, if you know what I mean. It's much easier if you, if you poke all the holes first. So once that's done, I'm going to use that as my sort of template. Template? Do I mean template? Um, as a guide, that's what I mean. As a guide for where I'm going to do the holes inside the signatures. And I'm clipping them pages together, obviously, so they don't shift around and, you know, then the holes will be all wonky. Um, and I think I work out that clipping them at a right angle seems to work the best. Because if you clip them flat, when you bend it up, the pages all shift. It's it's slightly awkward, but when you're working with layers, it's kind of you have to be careful how you um how you clip things. Right now, this part, um, I just go for it. Really, I don't 
I'm sort of eyeballing it. I'm sort of measuring it against the grid, but not. I'm not being too exact about it, I'm afraid. Because like I said, it's not really going to show. And I'm using tooth floss. <laughs> um, I got this tip from Sylvia from Write Your Life. Actually, I don't. I haven't. I don't think I've seen her do bookbinding, but I know she sometimes does the odd insert. She prints things online for um, Travis notebooks and things. And I'm sure it was her that mentioned that if you use tooth floss, it's quite good because it's fine and it's really strong. Um, so yeah, and it really works. Actually, it doesn't feel like it's going to break anytime soon. And it's very unobtrusive. Because I'm not going to have, like I said, a four million times, sorry, I'm not going to have these showing out of the outside spine. So I don't need to have any fancy coloured braid or anything like that. It's only really going to show on the very central pages of each signature. And um, I don't mind if it's tooth loss. So here we go. And this is me sewing them in. And I just kind of start from the middle. And I just kind of go in and out and in and out. So each hole gets the needle through it twice. So it's... Um, super super strong um, so in and out all the way down to the bottom back up again all the way up to the top and then back down to the middle basically um, but like I said if you if you really want to know how to do it properly do look at someone else's video <laughs> And then once I've done that, I'm tying a knot off camera because I'm obviously leaning right over and concentrating. <laughs> there we go. Tying a knot in it and snipping it. And then extra knot just for good measure. that's one sewn in and then I move on to the next one and the next one so I haven't got any background music in these videos um, I've sort of gone for um, real life sound effects this year I know in the, in the last um, in my last Christmas uh, sort of junk journal series I did like make an effort to do loads of like twinkly twonkly relaxing Christmas background music um, but it sort of it honestly adds so much time onto the editing and then I've heard a lot about how you can be using um, some music that's completely you know free to use like unlicensed because obviously I'm not using anything that I shouldn't be but then someone can come along and license it the people that make it and you don't know and then your video becomes sort of um, then you end up basically using music that you shouldn't be using without realising. <laughs> and it all seems a bit sort of complicated. So I don't have any background music. Um, it's all going to be sort of like live sound effects. I've got a little bit in the intro and the the ending. But uh, these are going to be quite peaceful, non-music Christmas videos this year. Okay, so I've got all three signatures sewn onto that inside spine. Um, and I'm feeling quite happy with the spacing. It's all a bit wonky, but it doesn't matter because it's a junk journal. So now the challenge is to try and get that s sort of attached securely. Securely enough that it's not going to like pop off when I start using it. Um, so I go for wood glue, <laughs> paper's wood after all, um, quite generously wood glue and then I, well I mix, I do my 50-50 thing, wood glue and um, PVA, water-based glue. 
um, and because I'm feeling lazy, I mix it on the <laughs> on the piece rather than mixing it first. So I'm making sure that the, the glue goes all the way up to the edges, but without gluing my pages by accident. So I'm hopeful that will hold that, that amount of glue. So final check that I got it the right way. And then off we go. So that gets glued. And then once it's dry, and it actually, when I put binder clips on the pages to hold them together, it actually uh, stood up right for me, which is very good. So once that was dry, I then decided what I was going to do about the inside um, jacket cover things. So I'm getting out my gingham sticky backs fabric. And there's not quite enough to go all the way to the edge, um, but it doesn't matter. Um, so I just cut it in half what I have, so I know I've got half for the front, half for the back. Just trimming it straight because I hadn't really cut it straight the previous time. <laughs> and then I stick that down. So it's going to cover um, as much of that interior spine as possible, that little bit edge sticking out. Um, it, it's covering that grey piece that you can see sticking out on the left. Um, and then obviously the actual jacket itself. So you can see it better on this side, I think. I think I remembered to make sure I was in frame. Yeah, so you can see there that I'm covering up, obviously, as much of that as I can. I'm getting the fabric right up underneath the end of the signature, the pages as far as I can and then smoothing it out as I go okay so when I'm flipping through I realise I've got these gaps in between the signatures with the um, the cardboard showing through so luckily it's the perfect width for a washi tape so I just grab my little gold Japanesey washi tape and I put those in between it looks really nice I think Nice little bit of gold peeping through there. You can see as I flip that some of the pages wrinkled. Um, the Tomoe River, when it got attached to the, the thicker papers, it got a bit wrinkled, I'm afraid, but oh well. So with those gaps filled, then it's the next thing I need to do really is decide what to do about the gaps either side on the jacket. So where the gingham fabric, the check fabric, didn't quite reach to the edge of the book um, cover, I've got that gap that I need to fill in. So I basically just have a look, at, like a rummage through my papers to see which paper. I can use to fill up that little gap. So in the end I choose this really gorgeous paper. Um, I think, I honestly don't know because I didn't buy it, it came from a pen pal. I think it's probably Flow Magazine paper, I think. But I, I'm not sure. But um, I think it looks really nice because the background of the pattern is sort of like a, a coffee colour and that matches the vintagey book paper on on the first page and of course the red is Christmassy Jolly. So I just glue these ones down, um, just normal paper glue because I think they'll stick fine like that. So 
So with those two bits stuck down, that's basically job done, I think. Um, all the pages are in. The covers had every inch of it covered. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's ready to go, really. So the next video up in the series is going to be the like pockets and tucks. So onto the pages, I'm going to be putting pockets, um, tuck spots, which is like um, somewhere you just tuck something in, as far as I can work out, <laughs> um, and things like envelopes stuck onto the page or envelopes sort of attached, um, sort of to add extra space for journaling or photos or ephemera or anything like that. So um, yeah, next video is going to be pockets and tuck spots. So I hope to see you then. Thank you very much for watching. I really, really appreciate people that have been leaving me comments and saying how much they enjoyed last year and wanted to watch this year. Um, it really, honestly, it means so much when somebody says they're enjoying it because every time I do like a video, I think, oh, what's the point? Nobody's, nobody's interested. <laughs> so it, re it really does, it makes a huge, in, you know, difference to me if somebody actually says they're really enjoying it um so thank you so 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 much to everybody who's commented or liked um yes and well see you in the next video and thanks for watching bye bye